And if it's that time, what is it? It's episode 59, and it's season two. Good and fuckery. Good and fuckery. Yeah. Oh, I couldn't wait. I couldn't wait to hear the horns. I ain't had to pull out the trumpet this time. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck you just say? <laughs> Remember that one time I pulled out the trumpet? <laughs> oh, I was like, what? Where are we going with this right now? What's happening? We got the sound system now. We don't gotta. I don't gotta pull out all the instruments. <laughs> I mean, we don't feel free, you know. If you want to pull out a prop, that's a board ain't gonna never take the place of that, you know. Hey. <laughs> all right, man. Let me call my silly ass now. I've been laughing since I tapped the blunt earlier. Anyway, um, well, first, um, let me get my respects out of the way. Um. Uh, Rest in peace to one of my favorite Capricorns, Betty White, as she passed on New Year's Eve. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Comedy legend, like real OG, one of the funniest ladies ever. One of the funniest comedians ever, period. Like, that's a funny lady to me, way back on Golden yeah. Girls. Uh, everything. Man, her interviews, everything, man. Shout out to her. She was a real legend, man. I don't know how old she was when she passed, but she's been around for a long 99. Oh wow. God bless me. I think as a if it's if it's not this week, it's next week. But she would have been, you know, of course, obviously a hundred or whatever. So but salute to the Capricorn Betty White. Mm. Um, another legend that passed. Rest in peace to the Mac, Max Julian. Dies at 88. Oh, pimp. Black exploitation legend. Pimp. Pimp down. Salute to the legend. R.I.P. to the king. Damn. The Mac? The oh, Mac. That's cold. That, that's a man. Black exploitation film at its finest, like one of the greatest black exploitation films ever made. That was one Mac. of the movies, bro. I saw it. I saw it randomly on Facebook and I was like, I always wait before I post off. I was like, nah, they just messing with me. They just messing with me. I did the same thing with Betty White or whatever. And then I saw it on Snoop Dogg's Instagram. I was like, oh no, I got it. It's true. It's mm. true. It's true. I know <laughs> Snoop was hurt. Probably a position with the pimp gang. Well, rest in peace to two legends, man. Who, who been rest in peace. Years. Yeah. Um, so let's see. Let's get right into the rest of the good and fuckery. Matter of fact, I'm gonna save that for a second. Let's go to the first one. Um yeah. So Kodak Black is willing to bet 15% of his catalog in a versus against Jay-Z. He's stupid as fuck. Hold on, say that one more time. Well, say that first part. I heard the second dumb part. What's the first part you said he's willing to do? Who the what? The first dumb part. Kodak Black is willing to bet 15%, only 15%, but it's still 15% of his catalog in a versus against Jay-Z. What the fuck you just say? <laughs> look at, look at, oh, mm, Kodak, K -K Kodak mm -hmm. Black from Florida. <clears throat> is willing, willing, this is his idea. He thought of this. He thought this was a great idea. To bet 15% of his catalog in a versus against Jay-Z. And if he wins, he has to get like um, some type of executive um, job at Rock Nation. I'm, matter of fact, I'm going to look it up right now. I think he want to be vice president or something at Rock Nation. His whole catalog up against reasonable doubt losers. His whole catalog up against hard knock life two losers. His hard, his whole catalog up against black album losers. His whole catalog up against blueprint one and blueprint two losers. What the fuck are you talking about? His whole catalog up against four 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 losers. His whole catalog up against the the Carter's album losers. God damn it, nigga! What are we talking 
talking about here? Sir, I just watched the the B side. I just watched this B side concert. The B sides. Some of them I don't even consider them B sides, but the B side concert was awesome. Is nobody beating JC? <laughs> That's the dumbest shit I've heard, bro. And, and, and all he had was just Blaze, uh, Tata, and a band. Just Blaze. And a live band. I don't know about Jay Z and a live band that just is awesome. But nah, you you can't play those, you can't play those Kodak Black tracks with a live band. Yeah. To a whole nother level that pisses me the fuck off. Okay. All right. Um, okay. Kodak Black is wrong is known Kodak for Black. saying random things that would probably piss people off. Um he's also the person that tried to come on to um what's her name? What's her name? Lauren London. I'm about to say not Lo- yeah, Lauren London. Yeah, it was young and, oh, M.A. Young, young M.A. Because I was about to say Mia X. Young M.A.? Young M.A. He was trying to get in the draws of Young M.A. And Young M.A. replied, that's gay dog, basically. <laughs> Which is kind of ironically hilarious. That was fucking funny. That's, yo, yo, so, I don't know. Kodak Black is good for saying stuff you take for a grain of salt, basically. But, me personally, I kind of want to see him go through that. I don't want it really happening, but I kind of want him to go through that. Like I want him to just see the greatness of Jay in his own element and then try to compete with that and then understand where he relies in the universe. Because I, I feel like that's what Jay Cole talked about, the kindness. <laughs> <laughs> I think the Jay Z concert, but um, Kodak, you wildin', man. Come on, bro. Like, <laughs> leave that lean alone, or them pills, or them perks, or them zans, whatever got you saying that shit. Go to sleep. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay, I'm, a, I'm I'm pretty sure it's the dreads, man. I think it's the dreads that they're, they're tapping into the like frequencies and the air and stuff like that. Boom. Stupid. Yeah, really, really stupid. Speaking of stupid, I'm kind of jumping around, but Antonio Brown mm. quit. Man, did he throw I, I, a NFL career for nothing? Nigga, they have let you back in 30 times for some real shit. You, you, you let this be the reason that you got to go. Nigga, you are stupid. And I don't, I don't I don't like to call another black man stupid, but damn it, that was stupid. Stupid is mm-hmm. you are an intelligent person, but you know what? Let me be real before I go any further. Let me let me check myself in 2022. Dude might got CTE. Mm-hmm. True. Cause I, I, I remember back on uh early first take when him um and it was two other receivers that was there at the time. And Pittsburgh had, like, a great three. Like, they had, like, a big three receiver group. And all three of them was there. And Antonio Brown was, like, maybe a rookie or his second, third year. And he was completely different than he is now. So, like, Uh something happened somewhere in there. I don't know what – like, but it's something something that is different that's got him making these impulsive moves like that. Like, on some real shit. Not to be funny. Like, I want to make some jokes, but – on some real shit, yeah. like pattern of behavior has escalated and has gotten weirder and weirder over the mm-hmm. past like, maybe five years. And it wasn't like that before. So when somebody make a drastic change like that, something is wrong. Yeah. And before, because before we get into it, and I'm, I'm glad you bring that up because I want to catch myself. I feel like that's the same thing Dave Chappelle was talking about, whether you say you call somebody crazy and that's dismissive or whatever, and they were saying that he was crazy because he turned down Comedy Central. I literally, know. in my head, what made me check myself, I literally was like, hold up, before I call somebody crazy, let me think about Dave Chappelle. Okay, let me mm-hmm. Damn, that's why. Go ahead. Well, no, no, that's pretty much it. Like, I, That's what 
That's why I was thinking. I was like, we don't know what's going on behind the scenes. And in the back of my head, I feel like that's what's, what's it has to be something. Something is frustrating. Oh, something is wrong, bro. It, no, it's, no, you don't do act something. like that. No reason. All of a sudden. And start this down with spiral without something being wrong, whether it be depression, whether it be loss, grief, drugs, mm-hmm. alcohol, so the abuse, so, so, it's trauma, something happened. Mm-hmm. And, and I really believe it might be CTE. Like, people, like these football players be having some wild stories. Like, you remember that dude Ray Carew? Nigga killed somebody and hit him. Yeah. Yeah, Ray Carew. I remember that. I remember that. You kill somebody and put yourself in the trunk. It, it's something there. Like it's something to taking all them damn hits to the head that ain't it. like them and them boxers, yo. Like it's something. We gotta pray for them, yo. There's no like it makes no logical <laughs> sense that this whole time that nobody ready. Like they have to know that this something's going to automatically happen. Like anybody in the world knows that if I get keep getting hit in the same spot over and over again, something's going to fuck up. Right. Like, never- and it, it don't Maybe matter how much tech or whatever, it, it still might be a little bit of wear and tear. You know what I'm saying? And it, after a while, it's just like not taking care of a car. One thing after another, after another, something just go out. What you say, Faith? They know there's no care. True. The coaches, the staff, no. They don't care because they want to win championships and gain more revenue. The players, no, and don't care because they want that money and they're looking at the short term and what they can do for themselves and their families so they're willing to risk that. But they don't realize some of them long, they think effects be long term and they come quicker than they may expect in some cases. So everybody trying to get something for nothing, but the, the, the consequences are a lot realer than, a lot, excuse me, a lot more real than people expect. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I wonder where his friends and family at. Like, where are the hangers on that's like, all right, shit was good and y'all was chilling with me. Like, well, where are you at now? Like, where's auntie, uncle, cousin, brother, sister, mother, father? Like, where's the the homeboys that from the hood? Like, where's somebody to like pull it yes. and go like, right, bro, I see yeah. the help that you need. Let me go get it for you. <laughs> let, me, let me step in here. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, uh-huh. But the nigga said, yeah, if every nigga is rich, you know, nobody will fall everyone will be each other's crutches. That should go to like mentally being rich too. Like if you see your homeboy falling, like especially if you wanted the homeboys hanging on, like, damn it, that's the money train. Like, why would you watch him spiral down? Like, nigga, step in, help him out. Hold your boy down. Can't be no yes man in this type of situation. Like your boy hurting himself, like jump in there. Be but it, to take a red pill turn, if he's a person that's surrounded himself with yes men, aka betas or whatever, they're probably not there to tell him anything. And then, you know, you never know. You know how money means changing people's relationships or whatever. Yep. Um, from, so, like, it might have been something and then some cross the uh, somebody said something or expected something out of them or something like that. You know, he just got more and more distant with the people he might have got around. But I don't know him. I'm just putting out possibilities of what could, you know, just, you know, perspectives. No, but, I'm but, but, um, they need to get the brother some help, man. Like somebody in his crew. And I ain't talking about the NFL and all that because I don't expect them to do shit like I don't know that nigga on a personal level for real, for real, for real. So like I don't expect them to do nothing. But like friends of Antonio Brown, family of Antonio Brown, if you claim to love this dude, like don't watch a boy like make decisions like that and just sit there. Like pull him to the side, handle that shit privately, but get your boy to help you need, man. Like that's you can't like fuck that. Jump in, do something. There's always something you could try to do. And I don't, I can't see where nobody's making an intervention because somebody like that don't make this many back to back to back to back to back. 
fuck up in this magnitude and this publicly without somebody being there that's like actually like it should be a nigga in his clique that's like I'm on on the sideline with you nigga like me and you I, I, I'm getting clearance from the team you, you <laughs> the, whatever I'm gonna get clearance from the coach and I'm gonna stand on the sideline with you and I'm gonna be the voice in your ear every time you about to spiral like hey bro remember your future man hey it's me you know what I mean like you gotta have them somebody to have them check ins with you you know what I mean if, if there's something going on off the field that we don't know about, hey, hey man, no, nah, we ain't gonna do that no more, bro. I'm gonna then, personally since shit, since I'm living with you anyway, probably I'm, I'm gonna live with you and I'm gonna make sure that shit, everything good. Yeah, hey, I got you. No, nah, we ain't bringing that around. No, nah, he can't have that kind of company no more. Like you know what I mean? Like somebody got to do something man, if they love this dude, man. And and that's the sad part that I I feel about all of this. Like it seemed like he don't have nobody to love him because. For this to be going on this long and the type of shit that's been going on, you can only the public shit. What the fuck is happening behind closed doors that ain't been reported or that ain't make it to the news? Unless you got one of them personalities where you just cannot be around him too long and that's the reason why he don't got people around him. Because I can imagine if you can act that way, it could be like, like, I, you know what? I can't be around you, man. You you wild too much. You wilding too much. You wilding too much. You're not listening to me. I'm saying stuff to you, but you're not even listening. You know what I'm saying? So, but mm-hmm. prayers to Antonio, yeah. his people. Prayers to him because if that is the case, we've seen this movie before. We've seen mm-hmm. him, and it don't end good for him. So please, somebody. More now speaking of people of needing help, pretty much. Um, and Faith might know a little bit of, about this since it's around his way. Um, Virginia Storm leaves motorists stranded on I 95 for hours, like a blizzard or something. Yeah, it was snowing on Monday. I was, I mean, I'm in the 757, so it was just like flurries to where we were, but in the middle of Virginia and up north. Um, matter of fact, listening to some of my customers, they got affected a lot. Matter of fact, what is um, mm-hmm. I'm trying to go to the uh, Josh Lederman from NBC News. He was in it, and he says for the last seven hours, I've been stuck in the car, not moving, in a total shutdown of I-95 northbound by about 30 miles south of DC. Oh damn! It just sound like. Mm-hmm. When we had it down here in Atlanta, when everybody was like getting out the cars and having to walk home like 10 and 15 miles and weird shit like that. Like, yeah, I always yeah, yeah, something like that. Yeah, yeah he's, he's, he, said that this morning. he said it was like 2 a.m. and um, they were still stuck out there. It was like, should we leave the car on? Should we leave it off? Should we bundle it up for the night? What, what's going on? He said, uh, Nine hours, and he still haven't seen like a like a plow or anything out there at that time. Damn, and for yeah, a long time because like Virginia is actually a state that's prepared for winter weather and stuff. So you would have thought they would have had the salt trucks and plows out there pretty efficiently. But it, it depends on, I guess, what area too. Like if they could actually get there and shit. Mm-hmm. Like, face you good up there, man. With a that snow shit, man. I ain't know it was like that when you said the snow. I thought it was like, you know, just regular shit, not we stuck on highways and shit for hours. I don't know. That's up in Richmond. I'm out in the country and shit, man. We good. Okay. Damn. Yeah, everybody in the city got stuck and shit. Um, 95 North and the shit shut down. One of them politicians was stuck in that shit for a few hours. I think Northern or somebody. No, I don't know which one. My people were telling me about that shit earlier, and I forgot who it was, but they were stuck in traffic. There was a lot of motherfuckers out there. That shit was on the news. Shit was in the news. Shit was down here and shit. But had to be real if they can out there, because usually they'll, they'll go get their peoples. Mm-hmm. Okay, not want no move. want no move on that shit. No, uh, and if I know if it was jam packed, shut down. So, but people can't drive anyway. So this is true. It is, it is. 
people panic when they start snowing and they see flakes and start swerving it automatically because they just see snowflakes, don't be none on the ground, just the anticipation or something. Mm-hmm. Those people are also, mm-hmm. mm, I guess, it's a mind fuck. So, but that's, that's just different people. I want to tell you the true mind fuck is that Saturday it was 77 degrees. Matter yeah. of fact, it's been warm and you were here, Tiz. It's been warm. This whole from Christmas to the new year. Yeah, it was nice as hell. And then as soon as you leave and it's Monday, boom, <laughs> snow. And that's, and that's the sad, the funny part is I wanted to see the snow. Mm-hmm. I was hoping like shit while I was at home. Oh, please, let some snow dry. That's a flurry or two. Me and the son was like, we've been begging for some snow area where we go. So I, I'm mad we missed it. Because down here, uh, they say it's going to happen, but it's going to happen in northern Georgia. So we still ain't going to see shit. I just want a story or two. I just want my boy to be able to make a snowball one good time. Yeah, before the world, you know, start totally getting hit by global warming. Is that too much to add? Just a snowball. It's a snowball. Shoot, as warm as it was, I was wondering if we were going to even have a winter. We're going to just skip right to spring, pretty much. Big facts. As God came in, I was like, oh, <clears throat> yeah, I woke up. Here you go. Here's a little snow. God said, hold my beer. I got this. <laughs> there you go. Hold my beer. Hold my beer. Oh, man. All right. So, Main good and fuckery and for the go, pretty much. Um, so one good Kanye West is reportedly working on Donda 2, which I figure is going to happen anyway because I feel like he was going to have a whole he probably have a whole bunch of random music he just haven't released out yet anyway. So I felt like that was going to come pretty much. Um I'm not mad at it. Um, I'm gonna be honest with you. I remember when we did the Donda like review, mm-hmm. like I was like, okay, it versus certified love boy at the time. I was like, okay, I remember saying CLB might be the one for right now, but Donda gonna be the might be the one that like grows on you and grows on you. Like mm-hmm. I fuck with Donda. Mm-hmm. I did not the first night. I thought it was stupid the first night. But it's one of them things, like, the more you hear the song there, like, the more they start, you know what? This is fucking amazing. This is good. I like it. <laughs> and now this should be bumping through my career. So, yeah, I'm not mad at Adonda 2. Give me more. I'll take a Gel 3, please. Give me a Junior 3, please. Not mad at you. Yeah. Lord, I need for you to wrap your arms around me. <laughs> Somebody need a ref. <laughs> uh, the fuckery, be, fuckery is this guy buys a house right across from Kim Kardashian. Oh, come on, man. You give me some good. <laughs> you give me the fuckery right in a second. God damn it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> up there. I was like, oh, this is just good. I, sounds great. Oh, damn it. I, you know, with Kanye, he a Gemini. You're going to get the good and the fuckery. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> good and the fuckery. I think. He's just waiting for Pete Davidson to come out the house so he can back the country. Whoa, how the hell? Can somebody please tell me how the fuck this nigga Pete Davidson keep bagging everybody woman? Ain't this like the third, like, either? I told you that he didn't have, like, he is just taking everybody woman. How? You say he's funny. Just, oh, he is making bitches laugh to the to the panties drop. <laughs> and that's how he survived this, all his years. This nigga get a giggle. He just, well, let's like a foul message. <laughs> Don DeMarco. Mm. He's funny and he say nice things. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yo, Pete Davidson out here slaying everything, man. God damn. I'm gonna tell you this though. Kanye, what, like five nine, five eight, five seven, somewhere in there? He That's like one of the rappers, right? He, he both though. He been in the gym. He was in a good six foot tall. 
I don't know. I don't know Kanye want to run a bone there to get Donkey Kong in the top of his shit. He might want to go ahead and uh make sure that he just, you know, pay his homeowners association dues and uh stay real quiet around there. I don't know that he want to go over there and start fucking around. Plus, Kim seems like she'll call the police on his ass. <laughs> you know that no. Lamar yeah. means so much they're gonna tolerate from a Negro. And then I Kanye seem like the type here call the police on his damn self before he go across the street. Hey, look, this is Kanye I'm about to go across the street to Kim's house. You might want to come out here. You right like there. Yeah. This nigga go over there with a police escort to stop. <laughs> hey, you see okay. me? just looking through the that, window. It's nothing. Okay. I, Pete Davidson is 6'3. Oh, all right. Yeah. Kind of, the shit out right. Of it. <laughs> it makes it makes it makes more sense. Down thunder on that nigga, man. Nigga taller than Chewy, I think. He, 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 he look like a, but he's a tall meth head. He's like a tall zombie looking dude. Yeah, but see with dudes like that, he'd be lanky. Yeah. But they be having like big hands and big feet, which means like if he swing one of them hands huh. and it got that loose, that loose lanky arm, it's like a it's like swinging one of them old uh maces from back in I mean, one of them flails from back in medieval days with the spikes on it. Mm-hmm. Like, basically, like a wrecking ball on a chain. Like, ah! Like, he, ain't even got a, with no good, <laughs> he can just kind of, like, overhand windmill that shit and just a thud on the top of the <laughs> shit. It's a wrap. And it ain't gonna leave no mark. So, like... <laughs> Why he always looks short to me, though? That's the... I did uh, not know he was this tall. Well, because he's slim for one, so he he's not gonna look like he's huge. And he's a lot of times when you see him, he be sitting at that uh desk, or he's like, <laughs> oh, okay, yeah. Up. So you don't really see him all the time at his full like standing up height, or he's on a podcast or interview or some shit. You know what I mean? But like, yeah, yeah. Put that nigga beside Tom Cruise. You will see the day. and Pete and and got dang uh, Kanye is five eight. Yeah, I did not know she was short. Huh. Oh yeah, yeah. The only tall one is uh Chloe, and she like what five five ten five eleven something like that, maybe six feet. Mm-hmm. Yeah, okay. the tall one. The other, the other, the, no, her and uh, what's the what's the model one? Kendall Courtney. Oh uh, no, Kylie Jenner. Courtney short too. Yeah, Kylie. And- no, nah, Kylie short too is Kendall. It's the tall, skinny one that's an actual yeah. model model, like oh okay. The model of some shit now. She was on that Pepsi commercial and shit. Kendall, uh she five ten. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Her and her and Chloe, like the only two tall, tall ones. The other ones is like pretty average height for women or short. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Davis and man, throw them down, stretch on strong around when they think, man. Or wrap one of them arms around Kanye Nick place and choke the shit out of him. Like a boa constrictor. It could happen. It could happen. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. they, made, they put a lot of perspective into things. I was like, eh, all right. <laughs> I know one thing. Kanye better invite Big Sean by that crib and uh, drop off his ducats. Big Sean, yeah, he waiting, bro, man. fuck out of Kanye if he don't get his money. And that's a big ass head. Big target, man. He was head, but shit out Kanye. Oh, no. Kanye got a big ass head, too, dog. Oh. oh. <laughs> mm. What? I don't think I would want to get uh, a head, but Kanye, man. No. Kanye got the big jaw. And Big Sean got the head. But if Big Sean goes straight for Kanye's forehead, he got the tender spot. But if he go for the jaw, it might be a might be a draw. This time on Celebrity Deathmatch. <laughs> <laughs> Kanye, the jaw west, versus Big Sean, a.k.a. Big Head Sean. Fine. Yeah. 
This is the lead up for the him versus the Maxillums. This is the lead up for the the uh, uh, main event match, which is Kanye versus Pete Davis. Oh, <laughs> music by Drake. Big hand versus Big Jaw. I my my my. I'm gonna go with Big Hand. I, I think Pete Davis will beat the shit out Kanye. I'm gonna be real honest with you. I don't think Kanye can fight. I, I'll be completely honest with you. I, I'm not saying he can't. This nigga might be like the next Floyd Mayweather, but nothing about his, the way he carries himself says, yeah, really. I'm going to knock a nigga out. Everything Same. about him says, I'm going to pay a nigga to knock you the fuck out. Mm. Now, yeah, he, he don't really. Davidson, I, I got secured. Pete Davidson, he, 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 Davidson probably weighs what I weigh. He probably like a buck seven or something, but six three. Uh-huh. It ain't a whole lot of like if he swing the end, but if if Kanye get inside, it can get a jaw to the rib one time. It's a wrap because it ain't a, it ain't a whole lot of holding that <laughs> that big flailing body together. Of Pete Davidson, it's, it is real methish, like you said. Little methish. I'm saying he a meth head, but he meth head. It's them yeah, he does. He does got that. him. Him. Uh, what's the other ones? Uh, MJK. <laughs> MG. What's the thing? King Gun Kelly. Grinning for no reason. Who <laughs> face? Yeah, he was just like smiling like a proud dad or some shit. <laughs> like, what just happened? Like, <laughs> one of the babies just like do something like they, they, they do have one of them like, let me show you what I can do, dad moments or something. What happened? <laughs> he was just staring at them. Them little motherfuckers sleep. <laughs> and they were just grinning like, ah, I knew he was going to be something. He, he, he opened his next case of blunts. <laughs> oh, <a> perfectly rolled. <laughs> I ain't got no more. The finest from Havana. Hand rolled by an old white man. On coke. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm pretty sure it's a little bit of coke on all cigars that come from anywhere other than America. Just because yeah, the cocaine is going around in those other countries. Oh, yeah. Hey, Bobby, I need more, more, more fish with the lift. I need more, more fish. Listen, have, you, have you ever smoked a Cuban cigar from like outside of the I, country? I have once, and let me tell you, I cannot breathe. Cigar. Like, it's, mm-hmm. it's something in there. There's something in there. I'm trying to. Uh, in there. It's something. But, this is not this tobacco. Something in there. <clears throat> yeah. Nope. It's something in there. It's something in there. I know a question. Does he love me in the morning? It's something in there. I'm not even playing, dude. <clears throat> Yeah, man. But yeah. That nigga chopped and screwed and uh, Alvin and the chipmunks and everything. <clears throat> Y'all ain't see it. There's something in there. That was what was in there. There was some other people in there. <laughs> Look at <your> face. <laughs> Please tell me what's going on in your brain as you make that face. Like we need a, uh, you know how they had Luther the anger translator? We need a Face, face translator, like <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> faces, 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 the best face translator you can ever have. Wow, this was doing that. What the fuck you just said? I understand. What the fuck? It did. It did get a little weird. <laughs> I'm gonna chop what you, did, what you just said, and I'm gonna make that a drop next time. 
<laughs> random, <laughs> random question. And then I'm with the good and fuckery. Random question because it just popped in my head. If you had a person to narrate your life story, who would it be? <laughs> Book of tea from Halloween. <laughs> We're coming for you. We're coming for you, nigga. We're coming for you to come say. That'll be the name of the book, too. We're coming for you, nigga. <laughs> to come say this, put dick in the back. And we're coming for you, nigga. <laughs> <laughs> Got their ravens again. <laughs> the ravens. Never more. All right, I digress. Oh no. Um shit. Uh fuck. I say Morgan Freeman, but that's that's, that's and everybody would say that. So I'm thinking, I think it's the, the somebody on my list that's just not normal. It'd be just one person. If you got two people in mind, I got because I got two people in mind. Oh, that'll be fine. You get somebody to do like the first half of your life, and then somebody else come in like that mid. Tell me that when I did mine. That, God damn it! This, 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 this is my idea. My idea mm-hmm. is Dave Chappelle for majority of it because I know majority of my life will be a comedy and for all the action packed moments, Samuel L. Jackson or any time that I'm actually pissed off. Okay. 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 So I think it would be see. a perfect. <clears throat> I will go with uh, fuck. Let's see. I will go with Trick Daddy for my early, early childhood. Mm. Um, I I don't even know. (laughs) I just imagine that voice. (laughs) um, You don't know that, man. Next, I go three stacks for the teens through 20s, early 30s, and then for my 30s through my 90s, I, I rock with, um, let's see, um, my fucking, the yin yang twin. Mm. Collectively, both of them. Oh shit! <laughs> I just seen them niggas do a Vlad in them. You too. That's what... I did see that too. I saw that too. I was about to get the nigga. Yeah. Get the nigga. <laughs> <laughs> nigga gonna be talking about his elderly. <laughs> it's gonna be random. <laughs> yeah, nigga had them goddamn vegetables mashed up because man, damn teeth was hurting under. <laughs> And, and sugar checked out. <laughs> and for my and to talk or and to narrate my last two days, Angela Bassett. Now that's abstract. Didn't see that coming. Okay. Solid. I think I leave a video. Did you already go back? No, yeah, I already went. Dave okay. and and, uh, yeah, I feel like I ain't know I had options like that. Like y'all done painted a mosaic of your life and shit, and I had just this one monotone ass voice throughout. So I'm gonna keep book of tea, but that's gonna be like, that's gonna be like maybe it's 18, no 17 through like 25. It's just gonna be book of tea. Before that, it's gonna be Donna Glover from zero to 17, and then like everything after that is going to be David Bass. 
<laughs> David Banner. Okay, I can see David Banner. But I would love, I would love to see Booker T say the version of you and Chewy at that fight. <laughs> so cool. That fight oh, with Foos. Coming for you, nigga. That would be hilarious. Hilarious, yo. And uh, Deja. For all of uh, <laughs> for all of true and faces part, <laughs> it'll be Ahmed Johnson and Stevie, right? <laughs> <laughs> And for food, I would have uh, David Spade or Rob Schneider. I think I would have my homeboy twin say some, narrate some parts, but there's some parts I'm going to have to not let him narrate because then yeah, he would jump. They're going to be roasting your shit through the whole fucking shit. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. You... I, I know this is off subject. And this motherfucker, he let me tell you. Yeah, nah. That's me, I got I got this friend. Um, matter of fact, I think him and Chewie is related. Um, my homeboy Corey Powers, right? Yeah, Every bro. year. Fried your ass. Yeah. Corey Powers, because that nigga kind of looked like uh Bricks Belvedere from Battle Rap. Yo, yo, every year he hits me up to give me a happy birthday and to joke me out. <laughs> every, every freaking year, man. And what this dude said, <laughs> happy birthday, shout out to the old man of the bunch, Mr. AARP, aka Black Creditor, aka Senior Heinz Belvita, aka Murphy Lee's twin brother. Me and him used to joke at Lenhaven Mall, and it would be so bad that people thought we were about, to, huh? Huh? What do you say? I don't follow. He, I used to just eat. I used to just every time I get my burgers, I'll just say cheese and ketchup. So he used to call me Senior Heinz Velveeta or some shit. They used to always have the joke with cheese oh, and ketchup with the burgers. So. Okay. <laughs> So yeah, I don't know how I got on this subject, but yeah, that nigga used to joke. He jokes me out every year <laughs> on my birthday, and I have to like retaliate each year. Said so he had a flex fit um, headband because his head's so big. But anyway, <sighs> that's the end of the good and fuckery, all yeah. <laughs>